Jen was a well-behaved girl. She had a comfortable home and parents who loved her. She should have been a nice girl all the time, but she wasn't. Jen had one bad fault. She was a pig about candy. Boiled candy, cotton candy, licorice, lollipops, everything. But above all, chocolate. She devoured them all. Jen spent all of her money on candy and never shared. One Saturday at lunch, her father noticed something unusual. Look, Jen's got spots on her nose. Oh my, it may be measles. She doesn't have a temperature though. Well, I suspect that Jen has been eating too much candy. Have you been eating candy this morning, Jen? Cream delights and uh, a little bit of toffee crunch and some Snickers and some Jen's ears grew red as she said a long some list of candy. Pops and M and M's and oh, Junior Man. Wow, uh, no wonder you have spots. I think we should go see Doctor Cranium. Dr. Cranium checked out Jen's ears, nose, and mouth. Much too much candy. She seems to be full of candy. Doctor, what should we do? I would recommend much less candy. An upset stomach can lead to a lot of complications. Yeah. The next day, Jen walked along the sidewalk to her friend's house when she spotted something in her path. Jen snatched up the coin and examined it. On one side of the coin were the letters J.M., which was funny because those letters were Jen's initials. Jen continued on her way, but instead of turning right to her friend's house, she turned left. Soon Jen came upon a store she'd never seen. The front window was filled with candy. The worker behind the counter asked Jen to come inside. Don't just stand there in the doorway. Come on in, there's a special sale today. Well, you see, the trouble is, I don't have any money. Well, what's that you have there? This? Oh, it's a coin I found for my coin collection. Are you sure you wouldn't rather have a box of chocolates? That's the only kind of money I take. Really? A whole box? With that, Jen handed the storekeeper her money and dashed toward home with the candy box. That night, Jen rushed to get ready for bed so she could try her new candy. When she was finally alone, Jen opened the box to reveal a single piece of plain chocolate. Jen ate it, and it was the most chocolatey chocolate she had ever encountered. Jen woke up late the next morning and hurried to get ready for school with her sister Mary. When Jen brushed her teeth, something strange happened. This toothpaste tastes like chocolate. You're silly, it's not chocolate. Mom, Jen's eating all that with toothpaste. That morning, Jen's toothpaste and entire breakfast taste like chocolate. Her mother and sister did not believe her, but it was true. Jen thought about these strange changes as she went to school. Children, we will be having a very important math test this morning. I will write four problems on the board, and you only have a short time to complete them. Excuse me, may I get a drink? Oh, uh, quickly, quickly, we'll begin in just a moment. Jen headed to the water fountain. Her mouth was dry and had a strong chocolate taste. The only problem was that the water turned to chocolate as soon as it touched Jen's lips. Jen tried all the water fountains, but her problem continued. Five minutes remaining, students. Jen hurried to sit down and complete her test. She thought hard and nibbled on the end of her pencil. With horror, Jen watched her entire pencil turn into chocolate. One minute left. Miss Plumsall. My pencil turned to chocolate. Oh, hush, Jen. I'll talk to you after class. Sadly, Jen was unable to finish her test 
and Miss Plimsoll did not believe her explanation. Her chocolate touch was certainly getting her into lots of trouble. At lunch, Jen tried to drop food straight down her throat without touching her lips. It didn't help. Everything she ate turned to chocolate. Her glass and utensils all turned to solid chocolate. After such an awful morning, Jen moved slowly to band practice. Hi, Jen. I'm glad you're not absent today. We're having our first practice of a boy's song. Do you know when your solo begins? Yes, right after the second verse. Perfect. Out the line, that's the way for Billy and me. Great, let's begin. Jen knew every note perfectly. She had practiced her part every evening for the last three weeks. Mrs. Claver moved her baton and the cymbals clashed. The violins made their amazing sounds. All were in perfect unison. After the second verse, Jen wet her lips and began to play her solo. <laughs> Jen fled from the room in embarrassment. It was impossible to play a chocolate trumpet well. As Jen was rushing home, she ran into her father. Oh, really? what happened? Jen burst into tears. She told her father about her terrible day. You mean to tell me that everything you ate today turned to chocolate? It's true. All right, well, we're only a couple blocks away, so let's stroll on down to this candy store and talk to this clerk and we'll see what's going on. But when they arrived at the place where the candy store was, there was only an empty lot with a sign that said, for sale. Huh. Well, I think uh, we should probably go pay Dr. Cranium a visit before we go home. Dr. Cranium tried to give Jen some medicine, but the medicine spoon turned to chocolate. Dr. Cranium diagnosed Jen with chocolatitis. At home, her mother was very concerned by the news from the doctor. Well, the doctor said it was chocolatitis and that everything she puts in her mouth turns to chocolate. My poor girl, what are we gonna do? It's all right, mother. <sighs> Jen knew nothing was all right and she hated to see her mother so upset. She leaned over to give her a reassuring kiss on the cheek Jen suddenly opened her eyes when her lips felt sticky. Her mother was a chocolate statue. Jen ran from the house and headed directly for the candy store. I was just thinking of you. Remember the old coin I found and gave you? I ate the chocolate and it made everything that touches my mouth turn to chocolate and I kissed my mother and it turned her to, to chocolate and I've got to change her back. Ugh, easy now. I can't calm down. It's all your fault. If my mother isn't made better again, I'm going to come and tackle you. My goodness. I'm glad to hear you're thinking of your mother, but I must have complete honesty. Jen's ears got red. It was becoming unmistakably evident to her that she had only herself to blame for all of her unhappiness. I'll do anything. I'll work for you the rest of my life if you'll just turn my mother back. You were right when you guessed that I had something to do with your chocolate touch. But you yourself earned the coin that bought it. Only greedy people can even see that kind of money. You did have a sort of chocolatitis, but it was just an outward sign of selfishness. My mother, she turned to chocolate. Oh, please do something about it. Well, Jen, if you had to choose between getting rid of your chocolate touch and restoring your mother to life, which would it be? Jen couldn't help imagining a future of all chocolate meals, but then she thought of her mother, a motionless statue. Help my mother. Jen, I'm going to give you another chance. All the items that turn to chocolate will return to normal again. No one will remember what happened. What about my mother? Well, why don't you run along home and find out? That's just what Jen did. She rushed into her house and found her mother in the kitchen. Jen flung her arms around her. Mom! Well, hello. You look flushed. Let me get you a glass of milk. Jen took a small sip of milk and it flowed down her throat. Nothing but fresh, clean milk. minute mother 
Sure. Okay. Jane rushed back to the candy store to thank the storekeeper, but the lot was empty. A pile of trash surrounded a sign that said sold. 